Good afternoon and welcome to Finding the Plot. My name is Sebastian Whittington Smythe and this is Sonic the Hedgehog. If you're 25 years of age or older, you'll likely have fond memories of Sonic from such games as Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog 3. However, you will probably have less fond memories of his more recent games, most notably this week's offering, Sonic the Hedgehog 06. I remember the time well. Gamers of my generation saw the Back to Basics title as a sign that Sonic was going back to his roots, but on a grander scale. This did not happen, and the game was panned for its broken design and melodramatic plot. I believed that this was intentional, however, and that within the story, Sega concealed a heartfelt message to their ageing fans, one that I shall now reveal. So sit back and enjoy the ride as I find the plot of Sonic the Hedgehog. As this is a Sonic game, we start, suitably enough, with a human princess named Elise. She is at what appears to be an Olympic torch lighting ceremony. As she lights the torch, she has a vision of destruction. And then things start blowing up. This is all Eggman's doing. Pleasure to meet you at last, Princess of Soleana. Christ, look at him! He's terrifying! Not a moment too soon, Sonic arrives, and with his super speed, he defeats the robots and escapes with Elise. Sonic the Hedgehog! Notice how that when Sonic first arrives, he is on his own, much like he was in Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Elise plays the role of us, the young fans experiencing this speedy blue hedgehog for the first time. Like us, she is amazed and excited, having never seen anything like it before. Unfortunately, almost straight away, Elise gets recaptured. This symbolises the initial joy of playing Sonic 1, and then having to wait for what seems like an age until Sonic 2 came out. As she is dragged away, Elise looks longingly down at Sonic, hoping, no, knowing, that she will see him again. After Elise's capture, Sonic bumps into Tails, who offers to help. Somehow, they manage to work in a reference to Mario. It looks like the princess was moved to another location! Oh, Sega, you wily fox, heaping on a nostalgia like a child at an ice cream factory. Soon, Sonic finds Elise and her impossibly tanned legs, and she is delighted to see both him and Tails. This is Elise's Sonic 2 experience, and she hugs Sonic close, displaying a devout affection. They escape, and Sonic takes Elise to a field, and so we begin the flirting. Your smile. That's all I need. This was the Sonic honeymoon period. Any Mega Drive owners of the time will remember it well. Sonic 2 could do no wrong, and our love for it was cemented with the two-player mode and the quest to unlock Super Sonic. They then possibly have sex. Feels great, doesn't it? Yes! Silver turns up and attacks Sonic, allowing Elise to get kidnapped once more. Again, when Silver appears, Elise is drawn away, just as post-Sonic 2 spin-offs such as Spinball and the arcade game diluted our love for Sonic at the time. Amy saves Sonic, and we have a nice nod to the chronology of Sonic CD, and like many of the time, Elise isn't there to see her, because she didn't own a Mega CD. Nobody did. Ever. Sonic and Tails then bump into Knuckles, and we have now reached the turning point of the story, Many will argue that Sonic 3 was the last good Sonic game, and the character introductions have so far banked on our affection for the earlier games. Sonic! Fuck yeah! Tails! Long time no see! Hey, it's Tails. And that's fine. Knuckles. Yay, Knuckles! I have fond memories of his previous endeavours, and hope that this current adventure lives up to them in terms of wall climbing and impossible gliding. Rouge! Shadow!
No! No! Why, Sega? Why? Oh god, you maniacs! You blew it up! So, as you can see, Sega got their intended reactions. Eggman has given Knuckles a message to pass on to Sonic. He has planned a meeting at his base, one which our three heroes suspect to be a trap. Nevertheless, they accept and head off to find Eggman. When they arrive, Elise is being held hostage, and Eggman demands Sonic's Chaos Emerald. Sonic hands it over, and Eggman reveals that the Emerald is being used to power his time machine, Ray. Thing. Eggman activates his machine and flings Sonic and friends into the far future, where they bump into... Rouge! Shadow! Hi. Long time no see. Ah! Oh, sorry. Here in the future, Sonic encounters the side characters, and they seek out enough Chaos Emeralds to Chaos Control back to the present. I hope that you've noticed and appreciated the intricate way in which Sega has woven this story. They flung Sonic into the far future to introduce Rouge and Shadow, two characters not introduced until seven years after Sonic 3. They were also introduced in a bleak future, one that clearly represents Sega's fortunes at the time, what with the failing Dreamcast. While in the future, the gang finds out that Eggman's ship is going to explode, killing Elise. To the data, the princess died when she was kidnapped by Eggman. Apparently, Eggman's battleship exploded! So Sonic rushes off to find and rescue her. As Sonic carries Elise to safety, Silver appears once again and dominates Sonic, giving Eggman the opportunity to recapture Elise. However, Shadow steps in and challenges Silver, allowing Sonic to rush off after her. It is at this point that Elise tries to kill herself, but Sonic turns up just in time and catches her. They engage in more flirting, and who wouldn't love that crazy blue hedgehog after playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles? She does come onto Sonic pretty hard though, talking about how she's being herself, a girl. Reminding Sonic, perhaps, that being opposite genders, they're biologically compatible. Which isn't strictly true, because he's a hedgehog. Now, I know where you think I'm going to go with this, but there are many people online who have already gone into the furry side of this relationship, so if you don't mind, I'm going to leave the furry stuff to the furries. The point is, she wants a bite on Sonic's chili dog, and in return is offering him admission to her special stage. The Sonic 2 special stage? The tunnel? I think this joke has run its course. In the next scene, we get this terrifying rubber face man. And then Eggman turns up in his ship, which looks like Magneto would if he was a Transformer. Elise surrenders to him so that he doesn't kill anybody, because at some point Eggman moved from enslaving woodland creatures and turning them into robots to threatening genocide. Sonic tries to rescue her, but fails, allowing the ship to explode. After a quick mope, just a quick one mind because he is Sonic after all, and Sonic is the fastest thing alive, he and Silver steal Wayne's World's ending and have another go. Either that, or Sega went extremely meta and allowed Sonic another chance at the mission. Either way, they do this by pulling Chaos Emeralds, and thus plot convenience quite literally out of their asses. This time, Sonic is successful, but as they celebrate, Sonic is killed by Mephiles. So far, I have been exclusively following Sonic's side of the story. This is because it is the main story of the game. However, the story is actually told from lots of different perspectives, so as to flesh out the surface story. There is one aspect of the story, however, that I must cover, and that is Mephiles. It is my belief that Mephiles represents 3D gaming. He was created during experiments on Solaris, the city's god, ten years in the past. These experiments also created Iblis, who is sealed inside of Elise. We find out that Shadow, during his time-travelling exploits, battled Mephiles and sealed him inside a scepter ten years before the story began. However, 
Mephiles was unleashed by mistake during the course of the story. Here we have an interesting situation. As we know, 3D gaming did exist during the 80s, but it was very experimental and didn't become very popular. If we accept that Mephiles represents 3D gaming, then it makes sense that he was sealed away during that time by Shadow, just as 3D gaming failed. Iblis represents mainstream gaming, and while it, through Elise, was infatuated with Sonic, his death at the hands of 3D gaming has compelled her to unleash Iblis, therefore separating her from mainstream gaming. When Mephiles and Iblis merge, it represents the post-Sonic 3 era, the 32-bit era, where 3D gaming became mainstream gaming. Elise, however, holds on, hoping for the Sonic that she knows and loves to be reborn. The important thing is that Sonic is now dead, and Elise is in mourning. This represents the post-Sonic 3 era. She has played Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic R, even that fighting game that uses the Virtual Fighter engine. She has suffered through adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and has just tried to play Sonic Adventure. She is sad, grieving, distraught, and as she is of the age to have watched the X-Men cartoon the first time around, she unleashes the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the seal is broken. Everyone then gets transported to a strange spatial rift where they try to rescue Sonic by gathering the Chaos Emeralds. The method isn't important, however. It's this moment that tells us all we need to know. Sonic, come back. To me. To us. What we have here is the key point in Sega's argument. The Sonic that we, the 16-bit fans knew, is dead. He died a long time ago. We can try as hard as we like to resurrect the past, but all we are doing is allowing our childhood memories to rape a corpse. When Sonic is revived, he comes back as Super Sonic, surrounded by the peripheral characters. This is Sega's way of telling us that Sonic is, in fact, still very much alive, but he has changed. The Sonic that we knew is gone, replaced by this new Sonic. Sonic saves the day, he and Elise finding themselves in a chamber which allows them to turn back time. If we put out this flame, Solaris will never exist. And then we'll never have to worry about the flames of disaster, right? But our encounter... You and I will never meet. It will never have happened. Yes, they forget it ever happened. And this is Sega's parting shot, telling us to leave our childhood and our memories of Sonic behind and to move on. Even newer attempts to capture the classic Sonic feeling have rung hollow, with games such as Sonic 4 and even Sonic Generations failing to capture that crucial spark that made the original four games so special. So perhaps Sega is right. Move on. Forget about your past and stop letting your childhood memories rape Sonic's corpse. And that is the plot of Sonic 06. Or perhaps I've been talking bollocks this whole time. <laughs>